Hello friends, so this is your coach uh, Prabhat Kumar and uh, today I am going to talk about uh, L1 derivatives. So level 1 derivatives in which we will basically discuss uh, the various features of derivatives which you will come to know. So here we are going to talk about the introduction to derivatives and with the introduction to derivatives we are going to talk about uh, how derivatives trade is a zero sum game for investor as well as trader as well as the other participants who are the counterparties and so on. So types of derivatives contracts will discuss difference between OTC and exchange traded derivative derivatives will discuss also role of exchange and margin trading and leverage so we are going to discuss all these features in details and then we will focus on other important topics in other sections of this tutorial and before that let us understand what a derivative security is so a derivative security is a security whose value depends on the value of other more basic underlying variables what those basic underlying variables or things can be they can be equity they can be currency they can be metal they can be uh, crude oil any such things those basic underlying security can be and for example if we see an Indian exporter is likely to receive USD 1000 after one month goes to a bank and contracts to sell the USD money for Rs 28 per USD. So now once such an exporter makes such a deal, so this is an example of a derivative transaction. So here this transaction can be a future transaction, it can be a forward transaction depending upon whether he is doing this on exchange or he is doing on some other platform which is not an exchange. So this contract is an example of derivatives contract where the underlying is the foreign currency. So as we said that it can be currency, it can be metal, it can be um, equity, anything it can be. So here in this example our underlying currency, uh, underlying uh, security is nothing but currency. Yeah, so derivatives from this diagram you can understand it is D is derivatives and A is underlying and the fundamental assets and for example a stock or bond or currency or commodity so these things can be our fundamental assets which are underlying fundamental assets and we have a derivatives T which is derived from this underlying fundamental assets and this is determined by some mathematical formula which we will understand in some of the cases later. So the value of D changes as A moves. So how to understand this? Because A is the underlying assets. So as A changes, the formula also allows D to change. And how to track D uh, with the change of A? We have many Greeks uh, that we will be studying later. Uh, delta is one such Greek which changes as A moves and the value of delta changes. So we'll learn this thing in option cases later on. Coming to the payoff part, uh, there is two types of payout. One is linear payout, one is non-linear payout. Then if we'll talk about the basic derivatives like uh, forwards and futures, they have linear payout but uh, options have non-linear payout. So we'll also understand non-linear payout options. Okay, so here we'll then go to uh, the concept I said initially about the zero-sum game. So what is zero-sum game? Zero-sum game is that I am making a transaction with somebody, maybe you. So I am making, making a transaction with you and if I am winning, then you are losing. If I am losing, then you are winning. Our interests are not mutual, but uh, uh, it's uh, just opposite. And something like if uh, I win, you lose. Something like that as illustrated here below. So, uh, if I make $50, you will lose $50. If we assume that the system is frictionless and there is no scope for brokerage, but brokerage also plays a role and because of that, if I lose 50, you may gain less than 50, not exactly 50 because some 
portion goes to brokerage also so that happens so still it is the zero sum game and then there are two types of uh, uh, derivatives as i said earlier exchange traded and over the counter traded otc we call it so we will try to understand like uh, what are exchange traded and what are over the counter traded so exchange traded are basically futures and options and their electronic trading contracts are standardized because it is going to go through exchanges and all so they are very much standardized and electronic trading is there but in case of those which are over the counter a computer and telephone linked network of dealers at financial institutions corporations and fund managers work day and night to get it fixed and the financial institutions often act as market makers and also contracts can be non standard and there is some amount of credit risk involved with these kind of contracts also and if we see the example wise it's the swaps and forward rate agreements and the exotic options so these are the live examples of this over the counter traded instruments so which are also derivatives but they are not uh, futures they are not options coming to the open outcry it involves uh, shouting and the use of hand signals to transfer information and uh, it is an outdated method so no longer it is used but uh, it used to be used earlier so it is no longer valid but it was a old method and then we have electronic trading now and uh, in electronic trading we use information technology heavily and uh, we use virtual marketplace also so coming to margins and leverage which we are going to discuss now uh, in stock market uh, we work with leverage so in intraday trading if you will remember or if you know you will understand that if you have uh, 100 uh, 1000 rupees in your account then in intraday you will be allowed to trade with up to 5000 rupees so even though you have only 1000 rupees in your account you can buy securities up to 5000 but similar uh, things exist in uh, options and futures and uh, forwards all these agreements also you will get a margin account and in this margin account you will have to give a initial deposit that is minimum deposit to buy something and that is called initial margin and with that you with that you have opportunity to check what is the value of your uh, account from time to time you do mark to market to get all your uh, securities uh, uh, market value at any point of time based on that you get the liquidation value of your total deposit and based on that uh, you get to know the maintenance margin and if uh, a margin call is done that's when you are required to put additional amount to maintain the margin then that is called a margin call and this happens after every mark to market is done so this whole process is called margin trading it is good if i can show this with an example on excel or something so that you will get to know like how margin call happens and how you are required to put the maintenance margin to keep the uh, process keep going on so that you do not uh, liquidate the position and you do not come out of the trade so all these things you need to understand very well if you are trading in future and option so this is very important concept further you will see the role of exchange and settlement so clearing and settlement is very important in equity deriv derivatives and national clearing limited nsc clearing which was earlier known as national securities clearing corporation limited nsccl this is the clearing and settlement agency for all the deals executed on derivatives that is future and option market segment and then we have clearing members and a clearing member of nse clearing has the responsibility of clearing and settlement of all deals executed by trading members on nse who clear and settle such deals through them finally we have a settlement mechanism and settlement is done on uh, after every trade 
and if uh, trade is not happening but uh, expiry date has reached the trade automatically happens and that is also settled through the settlement mechanism so here we end this session and uh, i would like to thank you all dhanyavad